Eric Obimna is an award-winning, prolific Nollywood actor who has taken part in drama productions on stage, radio, television, and movies. He began his acting career at a very tender age with the then Ananza Playhouse at the National Council for Arts and Culture, Lagos, where at the age of 16, he played the role of a 96 years old man in the late Bassi F. Young directed film, Radiance of the Sea. His professional acting credits include Eze Okorocha in Spider, OJ in the sitcom OJ's, Eugene in Battleground, Pirate in Three Thieves, Clifford in Everyday People, Agu in NTA's Oduwura, and many more. Eric Obinna shared his life and career story on this episode of The Guest. Let's meet Mr. Eric Obinna. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Guest. My name is Ahina Atta, I'm your host, and I have Mr. Eric Obinna in the studio. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing very Legendary good, Legendary Nollywood actor. You're welcome to the guest. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm so much. happy to have you on the show. I'm so happy to you be here good. with you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what is the secret? Why do you always appear younger? Well, a lot of people have said that. You know, okay. When people see me live, they're like, wow, you're this young, but in movies, <laughs> you look very old. Honestly, I don't know how that uh, happens. I'm just me there's no secret to it well is there a routine you think you you go through to always look young and fresh <laughs> <laughs> well the only routine i do is that um you watch what you eat oh you don't eat too much you see too much of food is not good for the body <laughs> i have to tell you you watch what you eat you eat lightly you know watch what goes into your body oh um, so do you do um, natural bit. food or the herbs <laughs> <laughs> Um, I eat normally. Okay. Whatever every other person eats is what I eat, but it's just the quantity. And when you eat, say breakfast, lunch, dinner, you, must you don't eat, eat breakfast, lunch, morning. dinner. Yes, you you eat when you're hungry. Ah. And once you're not hungry, you leave food alone. <laughs> and then I do a lot of exercises too. Oh, I, obviously. I walk a lot. Okay. I can trek from here to Ikeja on that bridge. In fact, across the railway, I would trek to that place and trek back. That's me. Wow. You know, so if you want to look helps. young and fit, you have to eat like once a day or <laughs> maybe you don't eat, I don't know. But me, nah, that won't work for me. No, people like you eat a lot, but it doesn't show. Exactly, you and it's body. good. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have you on the show. Thank you very much. You have a very interesting career in Nollywood. You started your career at the age of 16. And your first movie, in your first movie, you played the role of a 94-year-old man. Yes. How did that happen? Why did they even cast you for such a role? Um, in fact, that was the first time, you know. Those days when I was in the secondary school, I used to, I love watching movies. So after secondary school, I went to the National Council for Arts and Culture at the National Arts Theatre. They had a playhouse there known as Ananza Playhouse. The artistic director of that playhouse was the late Basi F. Young. Mm. So I used to attend their rehearsals. And you know, these directors, they have eyes for talent. When they see you, when they hear your voice, they know you can do this thing. So the man just looked at me and said, you can do this, you can do this. And I was very young. And he decided to give me that character, that role to play, a 96-year-old man, Mwashike Ogene. That is it. It's, it's a stage play. It was a stage play. And I was made up to look very old, and I did it perfectly well. It was very good. In fact, he was the guy that actually encouraged me to go into acting fully that I can do it. So you had not taken any role before that 96-year-old mm -mm. man? No, I had not. It was my first acting, and it was on stage. Wow. <laughs> so how long did you do stage acting, theater acting? Um, I did it for quite a while, like almost a year. Uh, so at what point did you decide to move to screen acting, to move to Nollywood, and why did you move to Nollywood? Yes, you see, um, when we were working on stage, there was not really much coming in as money, as income. Mm. You understand? Because we depended on the audience to get money. We didn't have the kind of sponsorship that stage productions have today, then. 
So, as time goes on, and you know, television is everything. Once you are on TV, you are popular. <laughs> people will know you. If yeah. you are on stage, very few people know you because not everybody goes to the theater. So, when uh, I had the opportunity to be on TV, I discovered that being on TV was much more easier than being on stage. Mm. You know, before you can go on stage, you can rehearse a play for three, four months. You must get your lines. But on TV, I, decided, I, I discovered that, in fact, they will give you script now and you will go on set. Mm. If you make a mistake, they will cut. And you, you will go take to, it again. Yeah, you retake it again. So unlike the theater. It. Unlike the theater where such thing does not happen. But, but that background, that theater background helped you in your screen acting, did it? A lot. It helped me a lot. It gave me the confidence. It gave me all the things. So the only thing I needed to do on TV was to adjust, was to bring it down. Mm. Because, yes, on stage we exaggerate. There's a whole lot of exaggerations in everything you're, you know, acting, you move your hands, you do a lot of things to make people feel what you were doing. But on TV, you don't do that. They tell you, no, 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 you can't move your head, you can't move your hand, you can't move. The camera is here, you have to be still, say your line is your close up, you can't get out of this frame. You know, they, you are limited on TV. And then you have to bring down your voice. You can't raise your voice. On stage, we need to speak mm. up so that the person at the last way here mm. on TV, you have the mic on you. So you don't need to project, you don't need to shout. Spider was a very heavy web um, TV series, right? Yes. <laughs> was a very big TV series as at then. And you just got this role after moving from stage to TV. Yes. How did you prepare for that role? I read my script, I try to understand who the character is. Huh. What does this person, I mean, the character, what really there is about this character, I get to find out what it is. And so when I come out, I'm coming out prepared. And that is why each time I do a role, it is always appreciated because I work on the character. I don't just take it lightly. You know, it is an opportunity, a very big opportunity. When you're given a role, mm -hmm. a speaking role to do in a production, it is a very big opportunity for you to prove yourself, mm. not just to the people that gave you that job, but for the, to the people that would likely give, give you more jobs. Job. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, let's go on a quick break. <laughs> and when I come back, we'll continue this discussion with Mr. Eric Obina. Keep watching. <laughs> guys welcome back this is still the guest and i still have mr eric obina in the studio <laughs> i hope you're having a great time let's continue our discussion you are an amazing actor and you have worked across board from tv to theater to radio and all platforms how how do you deliver on this road first of all did you study acting do you study anything related to theater yes i read theater as Oh. But that was not where the talent came from. The talent came from God. I was already <laughs> acting before okay. I went to school to study theater. So most of the knowledge I have in acting, I got it on stage. Okay. I got it on stage proper, working as an actor before going to school to study theater. What about so, radio drama? How do you make that happen? Hey, radio drama is even quite easier. In fact, radio drama is uh, easier for me, though it can be difficult. Because this time nobody is seeing you, but through your voice, you have to give them all the impressions of what you are doing. People need to, need to hear your voice, know whether you are afraid, whether you are happy, whether you are this, or they need to feel your mood through your voice. Mm -hmm. I thank God that uh, I was able to put that through too when I had the opportunity to do some radio dramas. What values keep you going in this industry? Because you have been in the industry for how many years? Ah, a lot of years, a long, long time ago. The thing is that when I started, like I said, I started very young. So somewhere along the line, I had to stop. Like I said, there was not much money coming in on stage. So I had to go out to work to earn a living. And then after that, I had to go to school, come back again. So it, it, there was that break for almost, let's say, seven to eight years break before I decided to come back again. So putting together everything, I'm, I would say I've been up to 20 years or 20 wow. something years in the industry. Wow. And from that time up, up until now, we know that 
people keep complaining about money, finance in Nollywood, like you have just said. Yes. At this point we are right now in the 21st century, 2021 precisely, do you think actors are being paid their worth? I would say all actors are not being paid their worth. Which in Nollywood specifically? Yes, in Nollywood. Some actors are paid their worth. S majority of the actors are not paid their worth. Now, let's take for an example, you have a budget of, say, 10 million naira for a movie shoot. You have some actors you call the A-lift actors or the faces. I don't want to mention names, but you know the superstars. And you bring them into that production, and you probably pay this one 1 million, pay this one 2 million, pay this one 3 million, pay this one 5 million, you pay them. So before you know it, most of the budget for that production is gone already on those A-list actors. And then you have other supporting actors, and the whole lot of upcomers, those who will play one scene, those who will be in the crowd things, those they call waka pass, work on and all that, you have all of them. So the bulk of the budget has been spent on those A-list actors. And there are very few, probably between three to five people. Mm takes up the whole budget, and then the other actors are not well paid at all. In fact, some of them don't even get any kind of payment at all. Some of them don't get anything at the end of the day. But how did you survive situations like this, especially when you were coming up, you have your family to take care of and so many other things? I would say it was really difficult. Well, even up till now. But somehow, when you have this belief in something that it will get better. There were a lot of people that we started together. They are not in the industry today because mm -hmm. they couldn't face the difficulties. They've gone out to do other things to earn a living. They say, man, look, oh, if I stay in that industry, I go die oh, or I go go thief. You know, nothing, nothing, you understand? But when you have the faith, passion. the belief, the passion that one day this thing would pay and you keep going, you bear the pain. There were days when you don't even have a dime on you, you don't have anything on you. There are days when you have to beg for money or ask somebody to borrow you money to go for an audition. In fact, there are some days when I'm even given a role, but I don't have the money to transport myself to the set. And I have to go to somebody to say, please give me money, I have a job to do. When I come back, I'll pay you back, you understand? So it, it, it has not been easy, but somehow my faith is seeing me through. But do you see a future where actors, not just A-list actors in Nollywood, will be paid enough to actually sustain them? They don't need to go outside to get money just from that job they are doing, just from that acting gig. They'll make enough money to take care of themselves. Do you see that happening anytime soon? Yes. Okay. In fact, as a matter of fact, it should be happening now. Is there a body working towards that? It's not really a question of body. Sometimes mm. the, the budget for productions is enough to pay everybody. But you know, we live in a world where people are so greedy. People want to keep everything to themselves instead of paying everybody who took part in that job what they deserve. They want to keep the money to themselves. You understand? Mm. There are still some production houses in this country today. I don't know if, if I'm permitted to mention names that when they give you a job, in fact, if you even had the opportunity of doing just a scene in their job, a mm -hmm. production company in this country, working with the same budget that other production houses are working with, if you're able to just make an appearance in their movie, whether you say a word or you don't say anything, you're going home with nothing less than 50,000 mm -hmm. in this country. So you can imagine if, let's say, 60 or 70 percent of the production houses would do that, so that means what? it's not even a matter of the budget we have. It's yes. a matter of it's a greed. Matter of greed, yes. Wow. People not wanting to give actors what is due to them. They want to keep everything to themselves. That wow. is just the, 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 the whole thing on ground. They tell you low budget, no money, no this, no that. And yeah, right before your very eyes, somebody is buying <laughs> the latest SUV <laughs> from that same money, from that same movie, from that, that same low budget job. But I thank God for those few producers and production artists are there. By God's grace, we have more of them. Mm. And they themselves will have the opportunity to do more jobs because them working always, always puts these smiles on the faces of actors. Mm. Understand? Yeah. So there's one thing that 
people say they, 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 they classify actors and films so first of all we have the cinema films we have the asaba films we have the yoruba films we have the uh, I, I can go on and on but it's still under the same body nollywood how how come about these classifications can you can you educate us about this because i know you've worked on both ends you've worked with the asaba you've worked with the cinema Educators, is it depending on the money they pay you or the platform <laughs> you are, you, the film is being shown on? <laughs> I think it has to do with um, the planning of the production. Okay. The planning of the production, the budget of the production, the equipments used for the production. You see, for Asaba movies, I give them a lot of praise because they started the whole business. Mm. Without Asaba, there won't be cinema today. There won't be what we have today. These are the pioneers. These are the people who started these things. And with their low budget and low equipment, they are still doing wonderfully mm. well. You understand? But the movies they do are not cinema standard. You can't use, because of the kind of equipment, cameras they use, lightning, all those type of things. You understand? For the cinema movie, you use very high quality digital equipment. Yes. You understand? Everything has to be up to that standard. You know, technology is improving. And you can't just bring anything and you put it on cinema it won't work mm. the technology won't match you mm. understand so it has to do with that the story you're telling your director and most importantly the equipment typecasting is a thing in nollywood yeah. especially for the oldies that started the nollywood i don't for some reason um, some producers just see an actor, maybe you're very good at this role, they just want you to keep playing that role, they bring a movie to you and you keep playing. And most times you keep playing this set of character, the same character, because you need money, you need to survive, you need to take care of your family and all of that. But at the end of the day, maybe years pass, you now realize that, oh, I think I've been stereotyped into this kind of character. So for upcoming actors that are coming, that just want to be actors, how can they avoid being type? How, how can they avoid typecasting in Nollywood? The only control you have is your talent, is your ability, like I said, not to play the role exactly the way you did it on. Try to do something different. Wow. You have to work on yourself and try to do something different. They have given it to you, now you find a way to escape it. Hmm. Do the job, but do it differently. Do the job, but do, do it differently. It differently. Yes. I'll be right back just right after this break. Welcome back. I still have Mr. Eric Obi now in the studio. It's good to have you here. And mm. we have been talking about important issues in Nollywood. This is the discussion. <laughs> So let's talk about Nollywood as a body. Nollywood has grown tremendously in diverse ramifications. What aspect of this growth makes you happy? We've talked about money, we've talked about typecasting and all, but what aspect of the growth in Nollywood do you presently love? Well, Nollywood is really growing rapidly in different ways. Now we have better equipments we have better directors <laughs> we have better stories you know do we have better stories now yes people keep saying the old nollywood ha they do have better stories we are growing with stories i don't know whether you've seen am i free to mention any of these movies yes here? you can okay i don't know whether you saw uh, riona african magic's original series riona i haven't watched that okay or oh, you saw Ajoche when it was shown? Yes, I have. Okay, you, you saw Enahe, Enake. You know, these are stories that, they are, they, they, they are epic stories. But when you compare them to the type of epic stories we had in the past. In terms you, of story? Yes, in terms story of story. Telling. Yes, you find out that there's something different. Hmm. There's something creative, there, there, there's something imaginative about them. There's something really creative. So Nollywood is improving in storytelling. No matter what, now Nollywood is improving. Now, plots are being created and resolved hmm. amicably well. This is not the time you watch a movie and you know the end from the beginning. <laughs> 
You understand? If you watch most of our old movies, you know how that story is going to end. Once you see a house girl, a very beautiful girl is a house girl, and the son of the owner of the house is one fine boy, you know that definitely they are going to fall in love, and that house girl is going to become a millionaire. The, you know, you already know where the story is going, but it is no longer the same way today. Nollywood is improving, honestly. Story is good, equipment is good, location good, as in some extent, the payment too is getting better. So I'm really happy about that. Where we're do improving. you hope to see the industry in the next five years? Because now we're, we're moving very rapidly. Like you yes. said, Netflix is now here in Nigeria. Yes. Amazon is coming to Nigeria. Um, we, are, we are being nominated for international awards. But where do you want Nollywood to be in the next five years in any aspect? Nollywood, I'm looking at Nollywood in the next five years where we would have producers. Producers who would realize that every actor on a movie matters. Hmm. Every actor, that young boy that is seated in the crowd in a church scene, the day the producers realize that he is very important, treat him like an actor, pay him like an actor. That is what I'm looking forward to in the next five years. Where they will realize that there are no lesser actors on set. We do not have lesser actors. We may have smaller roles, but not lesser actors. You treat that person you call wakapas the same way you treat that person you call your lead character. Hmm. Give everybody their dues. Pay everybody their dues. Respect everybody. Treat everybody well. That is what I'm looking up to in the next five years where every actor would matters. be recognized and but yes mm. where they all matter and for actors coming into nollywood what advice what tips would you give to them in order for them to survive in a very highly competitive and creative industry like nollywood yes first of all they need to understand that nollywood is not a playground Somebody said that uh, to make people laugh is a serious business. Mm -hmm. It's not something you can just stand up and you go on stage and you think you can make people laugh. You will just make a fool of yourself. First, they need to understand that Nollywood is serious business. It's, it, Nollywood is not side hustle. It's not something you do when you don't have any other thing doing. Let me go and add job. No. And that is why a lot of them, when they come in, the same way they run in, they will run out when they see the stress, when they feel the heat in it. They run out because they never knew it was like that. So you as a young actor, if you are coming into Nollywood, you must know that it is a serious business. You must make up your mind that you are going into a profession, a job that pays, and you go in there with everything you have, your talent, your respect, your strength, everything you have. You come into it and you are not in a hurry to make it. Mm -mm. You have to be patient. You have to take one step at a time. Be patient. Be consistent. Don't give up. You will always get to the very top. Wow. That would be nice. Yeah, I just folded my hand and I was looking at you like this, like, okay. I need to <laughs> I need to know this too. <laughs> it's really nice speaking with you. But I want you to tell us three things that has kept you successful in this Nollywood industry. One is persistent. I have always been persistent. I have been constant. You understand? I still attend some auditions, even now. Some people see me on wow. audition grand. They are like, what are you doing here? Why are you here? If I'm not here, now you go feed me. Now you go pay my house rent. Now you go come call me from my house, make I can't do job. So that persistency, that consistency, I'm always there. I am very humble. Hmm. Very, very humble. I don't carry my shoulder. If you give me the lead role to play in a movie or a series, when you come there, you will still see me with the upcomers. So everybody, we are together, we are GC, we are working together. I'm always helping them out. Even when we are on set, I'm always watching out. For particular, those green horns, the new ones, if they are not doing it properly, I will whisper to wow. them and say, no, do it this way. This is how you should do it. You know, try to explain to them. And, you know, I am very humble. I am persistent. I am very humble. I take my job very, very seriously. If wow. you give me a script, 
I don't just drop it and wait for you to call action before I pick it up and say, eh, hey, we seen how we shoot it. Uh, some actors do it. It is when they call action that they actually look at the script. They've not looked at it all this while. Eh, hey, we seen how we shoot it. Eh, uh, Mr. Kola Wole, which page is that? Uh -huh. And you begin to, no, I don't do that. When you give me a script, I sit down, I study the script. Wow. I work on the script. You yeah, are so passionate about this. Yes, is so there that's... a particular role you would love to play in Hollywood that you are yet to play? Honestly, I have played almost all Yes, you roles. have. That is why I'm asking. I have done comic roles. I have done very serious roles. I have played Agbero. I have played the <laughs> real man. I have even played the Rasta man where I spoke like the Jamaicans and everything like that. And when I came out, I was like, wow, was that me? <laughs> you understand? And I am always prayerful. Mm. I commit everything I do into the hands of God. Even when you give me a role to play, I pray to God to help me play that role, to mm. give me the inspiration to interpret that role and play it properly. Wow. It's not by my power. It's not by my might. Wow. It was really nice speaking with you, sir. Do you have any last words for your fans out there? Well, for all my up? fans, I want to say thank you very much for appreciating my talent for appreciating the things that I do. I owe you a lot. And by God's grace, we are just going to be moving higher and higher and higher together in everything we do. Hmm? Thank you very much, and I love you all. Oh, said I love you all. I love you all too. <laughs> and keep watching the guests brought to you by Afrobo TV. I'm still your girl, Ahina Atta. You know what to do? Like this video, subscribe, and please share with your family and friends. Don't just enjoy this video alone. Share it. Thank you. Keep watching our Forever TV.